Well, hello there, Chalmers Community Church family and friends. It's a real privilege to be with you again today. We're doing things a little bit differently, as you can see uh, today. Pastor Bruce Jones here, along with my wonderful wife, Ruth, beautiful wife of almost 34 years, the mother of our two children. We are here in our living room in our home in Concarden, and Ruth has joined me today for kind of a team approach to our sermon as we join together to uh, share with you about the importance of mothers and the job of mothering today. But first and foremost, we want to say Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day to those of you who are mothers, uh, female role models, mother figures who are with us. This is one of those special days of the year that uh, is at both one and the same time, both magically wonderful for some people and excruciatingly difficult for others. Uh, we know that Mother's Day can be very difficult for those of you who are grieving the recent loss of your mother, or you're grieving the loss of a spouse, or grieving the loss of a, of a child. Um, it can be tough for those of you who are estranged from some in your family. Mother's Day can be really hard that way. For those of you maybe who have longed to be a biological mom, but for whatever reason you've been denied that privilege, our hearts go out to you. We pray that God's supernatural peace and his comfort and his healing uh, will be felt by you today, that he will meet you right where you're at and that he will give you special grace. Yes, when you talk about that comfort and healing for the brokenhearted, it reminds me of two verses um, from the book of Psalms that mm. are just so beautiful and they have ministered to my heart. Let me read them for us right now. Mm -hmm. First of all, Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted mm. and rescues those who are crushed in spirit. Mm. Yeah. And secondly, Psalm 147 verse 3 says, God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Mm. Let's, let's just pause for a moment and pray for these dear ones. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. pray. Dear Jesus, we do thank you so much that we can come into your presence this morning, that we can invite you to be here with us, and that you are here listening to us and you are answering our prayers. God, as we, as we celebrate this special day, we know that there are also people who are dreading this day, mm -hmm. that this day brings with it grief and sorrow and pain. And so, God, we want right now to pray for those people. We ask, God, that you would uh, make your presence known to them, that you would surround them with your love, that you would watch over and protect them. God, we pray that you would bind up their hurts mm -hmm. and that you would heal their broken hearts. Mm -hmm. God, we know that you are all-powerful, that you are able and so, God, we just pray. We pray that for, for those people who are grieving the loss, whether it be the loss of a mother, the loss of a wife, the loss of a child, God, we just pray that you would comfort them in their grief, that you would give them peace that transcends understanding. God, we pray that you would help them um, bring together the grief with joy and that they might be able to um, know joy today as well mm -hmm. um, without denying their grief, mm -hmm. but that you would fill them with your joy and your peace. God, we pray that you would be the God of restoration, that you would help to restore relationships that are broken, that you would bring back to those hurting people, um, family that has walked away and in relationships that have been broken. So we, got, we pray, God, that you would be the God of restoration. We know that you are all powerful and that you are able. Nothing is impossible with you, oh God. Mm -hmm. And God, we pray for those dear um, ladies who are longing to be a mom, but for whatever reason, they are not moms, that their arms feel empty. God, we just pray that you would fill them up, that you would fill them with your presence, that you would let them know how much you love them and that you will never leave them, you will never forsake them. Help them today to see the blessings of today, the blessings that are all around them. Help them to see the blessings of other family and friends that they have around them. 
God, help them feel your strength. Help them be encouraged today. God, we just pray for these special people. We commit this day to you. We ask that we would bring you glory and honor in the time that we have together. And we thank you now, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. 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 Well, you know, on this day, uh, even though, even through the pandemic restrictions, the ongoing dramas uh, going on in our world, we do have this blessed opportunity to say thank you. We're simply saying thank you to our living mothers mm -hmm. uh, for the role that they've played in our lives. And, and we also want to remember with affection and appreciation those ones who have already passed away and gone on to their reward, but who have fulfilled those roles in our lives. So Ruth and I are going to be sharing the message going back and forth between things today. Uh, but we still want you to have the sermon outline in front of you, not only to jot down the main points and fill in the blanks, but also to take a look at the discussion questions that we have uh, at the bottom of the sermon outline. It'll be for our discussion time afterwards for those who are able to join us for our Zoom Sunday morning uh, watch party and discussion time. And uh, it's uh, or these can be just good for reflection just by yourself if you're not able to join us for that time at 10 a.m. So let me encourage you, if you can, respond to the invitation in your inbox this morning. Join us at 10 a.m. for our family Zoom service and discussion. You can join us anytime up till 1030 or 1040 even perhaps to uh, join with others in our church family for that time of interaction. Last week was our first time that we came together. It was a real treat to enjoy that time together. Yes, and it really uh, was. we're looking forward to uh, today being just the same. So, if you did not get uh, an invitation sent to you uh, in your email inbox, or if you've not been uh, sent the YouTube links to our online messages on Sunday mornings, that means that you're not on the Chalmers email list. Uh, you can remedy that by just sending an email to either Katie in the office or myself, either one of our email addresses, info at chalmerschurch.com. Chalmers is spelled C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S, info at chalmerschurch.com, or to myself, Bruce, at chalmerschurch.com. And we'll make sure that you get on the list, make sure that you're uh, sent those next week and beyond. Now, this week being Mother's Day, I can think of no one better to join me, as I said, and I'm, I'm so glad that uh, Ruth wanted to do this. Uh, in fact, this was kind of her idea, and I jumped on it like, yes. Uh, but this one, who is the mother of our kids, and someday, Lord willing, the grandmother to uh, uh, a bunch of grandkids, along with, uh, with myself. Um, Ruth, uh, tell us um, why you're joining me on the hot seat this morning. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for being with us this morning. I want to invite you into mm -hmm. our living yeah, room on, yeah. and to join with us here this morning on this very special day. I want to say again, Happy Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. I, I pray for the, all those mothers listening today that God would bless you, bless you for all that you give, mm. that God would bring you joy and bring you happiness, that God would fill your heart with his perfect love and peace. Mm -hmm. I am so thankful for my mother, Gloria Morton, who is 90 years young. I am thankful for the long life that God has given to her. I'm mm -hmm. also thankful for the strength that God has given to her, especially this past year. Mm -hmm. I'm also mm -hmm. so thankful for the godly example she continues to show me each day. I love you, Mom. Mm, me too. So I am joining Bruce here today mainly because... God asked me to. God has been laying it on my heart for me, in many ways now and confirmed it through other people that God has equipped me to share with you the lessons that I have learned over the years from being a mother. I know that we all come from many different life experiences, so my words today are the wisdom is the wisdom that I have learned from the Lord as um, I have gone through my life experiences. And that's a good word, wisdom. The book of the Bible that's all about wisdom is the book of Proverbs. And at the very beginning of the book of Proverbs, it gets credit where credit is due for uh, wh where we gain so much of our wisdom. And so much of our wisdom comes from our own parents. In fact, the first nine verses of the book of Proverbs, the very top, it says this, 
the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, my son or daughter, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Wow. Hey, well, I want you to get out your sermon outline, get out your sermon notes. Uh, we're about to dive in, but first, let's just uh, have another quick prayer, shall we? Again, Father God, we thank you this morning. We recognize and give thanks to, for the influence of these godly mothers and grandmothers and aunts and friends and female mm -hmm. role models mm -hmm. who have in their own special ways added to our store of wisdom and our life experiences. We thank you, Lord, also for those role models uh, who uh, care nothing about you. Uh, no matter mm -hmm. what their personal relationship is or was with you, you have given them to us and they're still gifts, and we can't imagine what life would be like without them. Mm -hmm. Lord, uh, we just pray that you would help us, no matter whether we're male, female, no matter what roles we perform in society, no matter what roles we perform in our families, help us to honor well our mothers today. Help us mm -hmm. to seek to leave godly examples and godly legacies for those who follow after us. This, Lord, we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So today we want to be looking at two, two main po points. We want to explore two main points. Who are you and what do you do? Who you are and what you do. A lot will be discussed today that all of us, uh, it applies to all of us, it doesn't matter whether you are a mother or not. What A lot of what we are saying will apply to you as well. Mm -hmm. But there will be specific things that are specifically relevant and applicable to mothers as well. But my challenge to you as we, as we begin is for you to be very intentional, to listen to what God is saying to you today, to be thinking about one or two ways that God is pointing out that He wants you to apply that. To your life today. Mm -hmm. How is God speaking to your heart? How is God challenging you today? Let's all be intentional to listen to God's voice and what he is speaking to you personally today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the first main point is who are you? We're going to answer the question who are you? First of all you are a child meaning you have a mother. Mm -hmm. We Makes are sense. all children of someone. You may think that Mother's Day doesn't apply to you because your mother has passed away or because you aren't young anymore, but Mother's Day applies to all of us. We are all children of someone. We came from the union of a man and a woman. And on these special days, Mother's Day and Father's Day, they call us to reflect on and appreciate that fact. Mm -hmm. Without your mom, without the people who raised you, you wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And God calls us to honor our father and our mother. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is repeated, this command is repeated many times throughout the Bible. And one place is Ephesians 6 verses 2 and 3. And I'm going to read those for you right now. Ephesians 6 verses 2 and 3 say, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on this earth. Mm. So you are a child and God commands you to honor your mother. Are you doing that today? Do you know what it means to honor your mother? Do you do that more than just today? Do you do that all year long? Well, we want to help you this morning by giving you some tips uh, that will help you better honor your mother. Mm -hmm. The relationship you have with your mother will shape how 
you, as a mother, will mother your children. Mm. And that doesn't just apply to mothers and, and mothering. It's the same for fathers, for anyone else who is a, a role model for someone younger than yourself. You will tend to lead others in the ways that you were led, right? Uh, your relationship with your parents, whether it was good, bad, or ugly, or a combination of the three, your relationship with them will come out in the way that we lead others. And I guess uh, our challenge is to maximize the positive things that we picked up from our parents, right? Mm -hmm. While minimizing the negative examples and influence that we also picked up from our parents because nobody's perfect, right? Uh, that's a tall order, but it, it's right. very true, and that's a good first point. Good place to start. Right. You don't have to do the same things that your mother did. You don't have mm -hmm. to live mm -hmm. up to her, her expectations right. of you. You don't have to make the same mistakes that your mother did. Because, frankly, you're going to make enough mistakes of your own. Yeah, make plenty of your own. But it is a really good idea to think about, to think about what you would like to do the same and what you would like to do differently. Mm. Be intentional. So point A under you are a child is to think about what you would like to do the same and what you would like to do differently from mm. your mom. Mm -hmm. Spend some time time quietly pondering on what ways God is leading you to do things the same way as your mother and what ways God is leading you to do things differently than your mom. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to, to be judgmental right, no, right. um, of your mom. No, I just want you to be intentional. Mm -hmm. That word intentional comes up a lot. Uh, when we do premarital counseling with engaged couples, mm -hmm. we get them to intentionally think through this same type of right. thing. Yeah. Uh, and it can apply to thinking about parenting as well, not just you know preparing for marriage. So when you consider your own parents, consider their own strengths and their own weaknesses uh, in their own relationship and in their parenting, you can then make an actual list. And we actually encourage couples mm -hmm. to write down on paper in black and white, make a list of the ways you want to be like them and a list of the ways that you want to be different from them. And you, this list can be helped along as you ask yourself some other questions, things like, how did mom and dad communicate to each other? How well or how poorly mm -hmm. did they communicate? What was their level of friendship and companionship like? Um, how were the major decisions made in the home, right? Questions like, how did they handle conflict? How was spiritual training done? Who sort of took the lead in the spiritual realm? Um, how did mom and dad discipline? You know, was there a good cop, bad cop kind of thing going on? Um, how can we be on the same page in our discipline? How can we make sure the kids don't play us off one against the other? You know, lots of things to think about and to think through when we consider how we're going to be the same as the mentors that we had and how we want to be different from them. Right, right. Mm. So another way that we can honor our mother is to thank our mothers. Mm -hmm. to, to think through of specific things that you can and you are thankful for. Right. Um, specific memories that you have that you are thankful for. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. often mm -hmm. we think about these things when our parent or our mother has passed away. Yeah. And we didn't take the opportunity to share it with them. So my mm -hmm. encouragement is don't delay, do it today. There's not a better day mm -hmm. than to share with your mother the, those things that you are thankful for about her. Don't wait until the eulogy. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But whether your mother is still alive or not, you can honor your mother by sharing with other people those things that you are thankful for about your mom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so it's important that you think, it's important that you think, and thirdly, it's important that you forgive. Mm -hmm. It's important that you forgive your mom for the ways that she messed up and hurt you through the years. Mm -hmm. You can do, choose to do this alone between you and God in the quietness of your own heart. Or you can have an open and gracious and forgiving conversation with your mom. But what's most important is that you work through these hurts mm. and the bitterness that it may have caused and to come to the place of forgiveness. Yeah, forgiveness, it's such mm. a key thing. Yeah. It really is. 
refusing to forgive can be one of the most destructive forces the world has ever seen. Yeah. That's what I think anyway. I, I, I've often said that unforgiveness hurts the unforgiving one most. Yeah. We may think that we have every right to hold a grudge. We may think that we have every right to, to, to nurse our wounds, every right to stay bitter and unforgiving, but really in the end we're only hurting ourselves. Uh, besides, Jesus said that we're to forgive the one who hurts us essentially as many times as it takes for the feeling of forgiveness to sink in past just becoming a decision and, and actually uh, becoming something that we feel as well. That's what he said, 70 times 7. Uh, and you know, our family relationships can be fraught with danger and uh, holding on to unforgiveness, whether we're talking about refusing to extend forgiveness to somebody who's hurt you or refusing to seek forgiveness when we know that we have done wrong, either one and both of those things are relationship killers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So who are you? You are a child. No matter how old you are, you're a child. We talk about think, thank, and forgive. Right. Uh, and, and what's next, son? Well, also, you are God's creation. I want to read for you a few mm. verses from one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, Psalm 139. I'm going to read verses uh, 13 to 16 from the New Living Translation, and they talk about the fact that you are God's creation. Mm. Listen with me. Mm. You, God, made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion and I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Hmm. Wow, that hmm. is, that's such an incredible bunch of verses. God knows all about you. Hmm. God loves you. Mm -hmm. God loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus into this world to die for your sins. God is calling each of us to be a part of his forever family. Mm -hmm. God is asking you to accept his gift of salvation so that he can adopt you into his forever family. Mm -hmm. So point A is, are you a part of God's family? Have you placed your faith and your trust in Jesus? Have you accepted his gift of salvation? If you would like to talk to Bruce or myself more about this, please don't hesitate to contact Bruce through his email. Bruce at ChalmersChurch.com mm -hmm. So the most important thing that you can do as a mom is to have a close, growing, daily walk, daily relationship with Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Motherhood is scary. Motherhood can be tough. It is definitely tiring. Mm. It is hard. And we need help. We need Jesus' help so that we can be the best mom we can be for our children. Amen. Mm -hmm. Secondly, share your faith walk with your children. Let them know that you love Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let them hear you praying to Jesus. Let them see you reading your Bible. Mm -hmm. I remember as a young mom that I was encouraged by the example shared with me from adults, how they had seen their mother praying and reading her Bible. And that had a real impact on me. Mm -hmm. I remember you talking about how your own devotional time was transformed right. uh, when the kids were young, when you realized that it was a really good thing for our kids, even at a really young age, even when they were toddlers, right. it was really good for our kids to see you in action in your relationship with God, right? Um, and so you made sure that you had your Bible open. You made sure that you were vocal in your prayers. You prayed out loud when the kids were around. Uh, you just tr and, and, and both of us tried to be just a little bit more open, a little bit more quick to talk about Jesus, a little mm -hmm. bit more open with our faith mm -hmm. at home. Um, and I remember back to my own mom. My mom was, was really good at keeping her devotional life uh, right in front of the kids as well. Mm -hmm. uh, many, many times at the breakfast table. Mm -hmm. uh, the breakfast table would be like half full 
of Mom's Bible and her devotional book and her journal, along with the letters that she was writing to my grandma or sometimes to her siblings. Uh, and, and she caught that from my grandma, my mm -hmm. grandmother, Beatrice Emke. Mm -hmm. She was a sheep farmer along with uh, my grandpa, Louis, just outside of Elmwood mm -hmm. near Chesley. Uh, I loved going to the sheep farm and visiting there. I'd often find grandma kneeling beside mm -hmm. her bed, praying out loud, praying for all kinds of people, including me. Uh, my grandmother, she was fearless about including her family in her own faith story. And I've often thought uh, across the decades, what a wonderful legacy mm -hmm. I have with my own mother and my own grandmother. And it kind of reminds me of, of uh, somebody from Scripture who had that same legacy. We can find so many examples in Scripture of moms sharing their faith with mm -hmm. their children. Yeah. But just this week, as I was um, reading in my own personal devotion time, I was reading in 2 Timothy. And in verse 1, um, no, in chapter 1, chapter, verse right. 5, Paul was reminding Timothy. He says, I know that you, Timothy, sincerely trust the Lord, for you have the faith of your mother Eunice and your grandmother Lois. Mm. So if, if Paul was speaking to Bruce right now, he would say, that I know, Bruce, that you sincerely trust the Lord, for you have the faith of your mother Ruth mm -hmm. and your grandmother Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm. So share your faith with your kids. Read your Bible mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. Uh, teach them about Jesus. Encourage them to pray. Invite them to pray with you. We started reading the Bible to our children uh, mm -hmm. when they were first born. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... We bought many different Bibles and Bible story books to meet them where they were at. We also had a special time before bed each night that we would read the Bible to them, that we would pray with them, that we would also sing Bible-based um, songs with them. You know, later on in 2 Timothy, in chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, Paul continues to encourage Timothy. He says... But you must remain faithful to the things that you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know that you can trust those who taught you. Yeah. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. So share your faith hmm. with your kids. Amen. You know, I would. I, it would be great if you would be able to meet our children sometime, and that they could share with you their memories of those special before bedtimes that we had together. Mm -hmm. So, who are you? You are a child. No matter how old or young you are, you're a child. Right. You are God's creation, created by God, and that in itself is kind of a mind-blowingly incredible thought. But there's more, a couple more points uh, right. to the outline this morning, right. too. Number three. You are unique. You are you. Yeah. Um, no one else is the same as you. You were wonderfully made. It tells us that in Psalm 139. Mm -hmm. You are special. You have, the, you have a unique personality. You have a unique set of gifts and abilities. So don't try to be someone else. Don't right. try to live someone else's life. Mm. God created you exactly right. God created you exactly right. That took me a mm. long time to really believe it, to let mm. it settle in to my heart and my mind. God loves you. Mm. It's so important, therefore, that you get to know you. Wow, that really kind of sounds funny. So, sounds funny, it does, but but it's so easy. It's so easy to go through life doing what's expected of us and living up to other people's expectations mm. that we don't really know ourselves. So point number one is get to know yourself. So, Perhaps you need to ask yourself these questions. Perhaps mm. you need to write some of these questions down right now. Ask yourself these questions: What do I like? What fills me up emotionally? How do I feel loved? Mm. What fills up my love tank? What activities make me happy and refreshed? What skills am I good at? What skills do I want to learn? These and so many more questions are really helpful to help you get to know yourself. Mm. 
-hmm. It's important to know yourself and who God created you to be. And to be thankful for who God created you to be. To be mm -hmm. thankful for God's unique creation. Ask God to show you areas in your life where you need to grow, where you need to develop, so that mm. you can become more like Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's important not only to get to know yourself, but then it's also important that you love yourself. That, that may sound interesting as well, but Jesus talks about this in Mark 12, 28 through 31, when he was asked what the greatest commandment is. He said right. that the most important command in all of the law, the most important commandment in all of the scriptures is the commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, or to the same extent that you love yourself, in the same way that you love yourself. So we, we often skip over this as you love yourself part. Right. But taking care of yourself... Uh, and realizing who you are above and beyond just being a parent, especially for your mothers, is a really, really good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we try to let people know that self-care mm -hmm. is not self-ish, right? Self-care is not being self-ish. Right. And part of learning to love yourself or care for yourself, even to know yourself, is knowing who you are in Christ, right? Right? In the Bible, we learn so many things about who we are in Christ. In Jesus, because of Him, we are accepted. We are significant. We are secure. All of those things in Christ. You are God's child. You are free from condemnation. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works that He's prepared in advance for you to do. You can do and you can endure all things through Christ who gives you strength. So many different things that go into um, who we are in Christ and how that helps us to know and to, in a proper godly way, love ourselves. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, once you are a mom, you are always a mom. Mm -hmm. But that is just part of your, your identity. Mm -hmm. You are so much more than only a mom. Mm -hmm. The process of answering these questions and learning about yourself and loving yourself and respecting yourself that is a lifelong process. Mm -hmm. I continue to learn about myself. I continue to learn about who God created me to be. I continue to work on loving myself and respecting myself and respecting who God created me to be. Mm -hmm. I am so thankful that over this past winter, I have ha had the privilege of doing a, a Bible study with my sister-in-law through the wonders of meeting online. Um, I've been doing a Bible study all about learning more about who I am before God. I find that, that sometimes mm. in the past I have been so caught up in living uh, my life based on other people's expectations of me mm -hmm. that I have lost sight of who I am and what God's plans for me are. Mm -hmm. As we were preparing for this message, I came across a poem that I've had for a while. I can't even remember who wrote it or who gave it to me, but it is so applicable right now that mm -hmm. I want to read it to you. It's, it's called, I Am Special. Through all of eternity, no one will ever look, talk, walk, think, or do exactly like me. I am special. I am rare. As in all rarities, there is great value. I need not attempt to imitate others. I will accept. Yes, I will celebrate my differences. I am special. I continue to realize it is not an accident that I am special. I continue to see that God created me special for a very special purpose. I will ask the Father to teach me his divine plan for my life and that it may stand forth revealed to me as it should, unfolding in perfect sequence and perfect order in such a way as to bring the greatest glory to his name. I am special. He called me out and ordained me to a calling that no one else can do as well as me. Out of the billions of applicants, mm -hmm. only one is qualified. Mm -hmm. Only one has the best combination of what it takes. Just as surely as every snowflake that falls has a perfect design and no two designs are the same, 
so it is within the body of Christ also. No two believers are the same. And without each member, the body would be lacking and God's plan would be incomplete. I am special. I am the only one in God's creation with my set of natural abilities. There will always be someone who is better at one of the things that I am good at, but no one on the universe can reach the quality of my combination of talents, ideas, natural abilities, and spiritual abilities. I, like a room full of musical instruments, um, some may excel alone, but none can match the symphony sound of the body of Christ when they are all played together, because God set the members, every one of them, in the body of Christ as it pleased him. I am special. No one sees things exactly as I do. In all of time, there has been no one who laughs like me, no one who cries like me, and what makes me laugh and cry will never provoke identical laughter and tears from anybody else, ever. Since the beginning of time, there is nobody like me. Since the beginning of time, there has never been another person like me. Nobody has my smile and my eyes and my nose and my hair, my hands and my voice. I am special. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, God, for making me so wonderfully unique. So who are you? You are also, number four, you are also a co-parent. It takes a man and a woman for a child to be created. Mm -hmm. Your child has a dad. You, as, as we read in um, Ephesians 6, verse 2 earlier, we need to honor our father and our mother. Mm -hmm. You need to set an example for children on how they can honor their father. One of the best ways you can love your children is to love their dad. Everyone is living in a unique situation. I, I realize that. Yeah. But if you are married, one of the best ways you can provide a safe and stable and healthy home environment for your children is to love your spouse. Mm -hmm. to, to commit to loving your spouse. To have the courage to work on making your marriage better. Right. Have the courage also to communicate mm -hmm about everything, mm -hmm. to communicate about hopes and dreams, about your faith, about expectations, mm -hmm. about assumptions, about hurts, about sorrows, about joys, about love languages. Mm -hmm. It's Quite important anything. that we communicate about everything. This takes courage. It's also um, important that you have courage to continue to work on your marriage. As, as Bruce and I have um, been married almost 34, 34 years, we have never stopped working on our marriage. Mm -hmm. We continue to take more um, marriage courses, mm -hmm. and uh, we continue to ask God to help us to be better and better so that we can more and more um, show respect and love to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we also, um, I also encourage you to have courage to forgive your spouse. In order to love your spouse, you need to also forgive your spouse. We are married to imperfect people. Believe it or not. Yeah. And so are they. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so therefore it's important that we have forgiveness, that we grow in forgiveness. Again, forgiveness is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So if you're following the sermon outline this morning, filling in the blanks, let me give a little bit of review to bring you up to speed. Uh, a mother's legacy, or really the legacy that any of us can leave for those coming behind us, those that we have the privilege to lead, a uh, legacy is shaped by our understanding of a couple of different things. First of all, who you are. Our understanding of who we are. Uh, the truths about who you are include the fact that you're a child. No matter how old or young you are, you're still a child. You are God's creation, created fearfully and wonderfully by your Creator, who made you, thirdly, unique, special, one of a kind. 
And so as you pour your lives into others, especially you mothers, as you pour, especially with young children, as you pour your life into other people, don't lose track of who you are before God. You are God's unique child. And as Ruth just mentioned, fourthly, you are a co-parent, right? As if we're married and, and raising a family together, you are uh, a co-parent responsible along with your spouse for the children and uh, eventually for the grandchildren and other young people that the Lord brings into your lives, the other uh, folks that he blesses you with in that way. Now, Ruth promised you a part B as well at the beginning uh, because legacies are shaped by this understanding of who we are, but also by a part B, by the things that we do yes. to maximize our positive legacy. So not only who we are, but what we do. And part B includes some things that, uh, or some ideas about what we should be doing to maximize our legacy. And we are going to come back at this to finish these thoughts next month, Lord willing, on Father's Day. Ruth is going to join me again, Lord willing, here on camera in our online message. And if we're back to our online or our in-person mm -hmm. services by then, we'll speak together in the Chalmers pulpit as well. But until then, remember that your legacy, especially you moms, but any of us who strive to leave a positive mm -hmm. legacy, it begins with this good and healthy understanding of who we are. Yes. We are a child. And, and no matter, you know, how long our parents have been gone, we can still honor them even after they're gone. Thinking about them, thanking them, forgiving them, even as we revel in the fact that we ourselves are much loved children of our Heavenly Father. Um, we are God's creation, as I said, fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can and should, in fact, the most important decision you will ever make is the decision to become part of God's forever family. To come, yes. become reconciled with our Father who loves us yes. and, and who, who made it possible for us to be reconciled with Him by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes. Uh, we are also unique. Nobody else in the world is like us, like the little poem that Ruth read. Uh, nobody's like us. We need to get to know ourselves and in a godly, unselfish way to love ourselves. Yes. We are created to be exactly the way God wants us to be. And then we are also co-parents. If we're married and raising kids... We have a partner in this process of raising another generation to serve and to love Jesus. Well, at the bottom of your sermon outline, both pages of the outline, you're going to see some good discussion and or reflection questions, whether you're able to join us for our Zoom discussion time or not. These would be good questions for you to be think about and to, uh, to, to thinking about and to talk about with somebody else. Now, Ruth and I, uh, and we, our prayer is that not only for us, but for all of us at Chalmers and, and all of us who love and serve Jesus, our, our prayer is that our legacy would point people to Jesus Christ. Uh, yes. That we'd point our, put people to Jesus. So we want to say Happy Mother's Day. We want to tell you to stay tuned for uh, the conclusion of this message on Father's Day as we try to tie it all together. But uh, as we come to the end of our time today, can you just bow your heads with us and we will pray together. Oh, Father God, what a privilege, what a responsibility we have as we attempt to lead the next generation toward you rather than away from you. Lord, we ask that you please give us your grace and your strength to do that as your Holy Spirit gives us the power leading us in your ways. We pray, dear God, that you would give each mom who uh, is listening or part of things today, give each mom strength. Mm -hmm. Help each mom to see, even in the most, of mu most mundane of tasks, the eternal cosmic significance that you place on motherhood. Would you help each mom to understand that the most radical world-changing events may be happening in her own home? Help her, Lord, to forgive those people who undermine the significance of motherhood. We especially pray, Lord, for single moms. We think of them especially. Those ones who must lean solely on you for, for the fathering of their children. We thank you that your large, big, heavenly, strong arms surround children who may never know their earthly father. We also pray, Lord, for mothers who, for, for those literally who have the gift of mothering, but who never had the honor of bearing children. But Lord, we pray that their nurturing would extend to many poor and needy who cross the threshold of their lives. We want to thank you, Lord, for the loving examples that we have to look up to. And we ask that our example, our legacy, 
we leave would be positive, would draw others to you. And Lord, may you shade and shelter our loved ones so that our sins and our shortcomings don't devastate their faith or take them further away from you. Lord, you are merciful. Yes. And we thank you for how you will multiply our legacy for your glory. Mm. We pray this on this Mother's Day in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, Chalmers family and friends. Uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Yes. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.